We will be arriving at the studio shortly, gentlemen. Thank you. As I was saying, a friend of mine who's a Gurkha drowned in a vat of vinegar. Oh, pickled Gurkha. In fact, he's just touched down. Please unfasten your seatbelts for Mr. Tim Vine. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, what a reception. Thank you. So this bloke was decorating my kitchen and every time he put a tile up, he said a poem. I thought, that's versatile. <laughs> Many people know that I'm also a lion tamer. That's about three seconds. Yes, he was in the Oxford and Cambridge boat race. What a great roar. <laughs> Welcome to the last episode in this series of Fluke. Oh. I know it's a sad moment, but you know what they say? People who live in glass houses get charged a fortune by the window cleaner. <laughs> Knowledge is useless, skill is. Yes, Yes, this is Fluke, the game that makes everything else seem a bit more worthwhile. A plethora of meaningless questions and absurd choices will determine who will be crowned this week's Duke of Fluke. And if you win the crown, you play for the prize. And what's the prize? It's the prize! What could that aircraft represent? And who will be the Duke of the whole series? Only one way to find out. Let's meet our Flukers! <laughs> This is Chris. Hello, Chris. Hi, yeah. All right. Now, it says here, I'm your sales rep. Right, so. Right, interesting. And it says here, you'd like to play in the FA Cup final in Spurs. Uh, That's illegal, isn't it? Because it's like studs <laughs> only, surely. I mean, <laughs> four Spurs. Four Spurs? Right, yeah. Right, well, one on each. Yeah. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> and you want to be a firefighter? Yeah, I wouldn't mind, yeah. Right, have you done anything towards that? Like, started a few and then put them out and gone, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Not as yet, no. No, right, because yeah. they do say, don't they, fight fire with fire. Although you never see firemen doing that, do you? You never see people going, uh, you know, always oh, gone out, get the flamethrower. <laughs> There's Chris. Over here we have Gemma. Hello, Gemma. Hi. And uh, you're a nanny. I am. So you look after children? I do, two children, Thomas and Melissa. Thomas and Melissa, do you want to wave to them? Hi. Right, and they're over there, are they? <laughs> yeah. Right. And, um, and you've got a fear of moths. Yep. <laughs> right, and, uh, and a lot, you know, a lot of English moths are poisonous, do you know that? Uh, actually, five kinds of them can kill. And, and if you get them cornered, they actually go for the throat. It's extraordinary. It also says here you're very gullible. <laughs> and so, uh, what's this acrylic story? What's this acrylics thing? Well, I was once buying a coat and it yeah. had an acrylic collar. And yep. my brother said, oh, you can't buy that, it's really cruel. Think of all them acrylics that you're killing. <laughs> and I believed him. And you believed him? <laughs> right. And you look after children. <laughs> Right, there's Gemma. Good luck with the game. Over yep. here we have Dan. Hello, Dan. How are there? Not bad, yep. And it says you're from London, but you were born in Canada. Yeah, that's right. Must have been a very long umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you broke your trombone playing rounders. What? No, my collarbone. Oh, your collarbone? Collarbone, yeah. <laughs> Put trombone on this. <laughs> oh, dear, it's the writer. He's from Stockton. Now, and your hero is the, is the Fonz. Yeah, that's right. Hey. It's hey. clear my throat there, sorry. Right. And uh, they're, they're doing repeats of his show at the moment. Are they? Yeah, happy days are here again. <laughs> <laughs> There's Dan. Over here we have Laura. Hello, Hi. Laura. And uh, it's Laura Cudd, isn't it? Yes. All right, what's your middle name? Chewing the? <laughs> <laughs> um, and your worst fear, your worst fear is, is losing your memory. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're on fluke. How are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, you love making people laugh. Yeah. Right, make me laugh. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I like that. Well, just like four fingers need a thumb, our four flukers need a duke. Yes, he's been splashed all over the tabloids, which is his own fault for reading newspapers in the bath. <laughs> Let's get emotional for the reigning duke of fluke, Jeremy! <laughs> Thank you very much, how are you? Very well, yes. Yeah. 
Oh, you've got a sort of little group of five male fans <laughs> up there that uh, they wanted a piece of you. Mm. You, uh, you didn't quite get that prize last week. Not quite, no. No, let's find out how he lost it. Have a look at this. Yeah. You're going for squeak. Remember, you can't avoid, you can't, well, listen, if you get that cut, it's over for you. Right? Audience, tell me. Tell him. Yeah. Tell him. Yeah. Yeah. He says it squeaks. Oh. It doesn't squeak at all. Oh. And those are our flukers. Let's hear it for them. Yes. <laughs> well, five wonderful people, I'm sure you'll agree. But on fluke, someone always leaves the party early. Yes, we use the bit of a wasted journey pointer. And if it points at you, you have to go home. OK, are you ready? Get close to the pointer, please. Here we go. <coughs> We're off. Oh. It's Chris. The rest of you, take your positions, please. <laughs> Had to happen to someone. A bit of a wasted journey. But you do take with you your fluke silver short straw. There you are. That's Thank yours. You. And you have met with that man himself. Major disappointment. Here he is. <laughs> Hello, Major. What's up? You look a bit down in the dumps. I've lost my camouflage trousers, Vine. Uh, what colour are they? Yellow, green, brown, blue, pink and black. Ah, yes. You've been on manoeuvres in a snooker hall. <laughs> Major, take him away! <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Let's play flute! <laughs> Right, these questions are worth 15 points each. Here we go. First of all, you, Gemma. The cover of the Devo album, Oh No, It's Devo, depicts the band dressed as potatoes. Is the V in the name Devo yellow or blue? Yellow! yellow. yellow. Gemma says yellow. Let's have a look. Yellow. It is yellow, yes. Yeah. Dan, when Ray Cox of Channel 4's Wanted sneezes, is it a large blaster or a tiny squeak? Blaster! Large blaster. Large blaster. Let's have a look. <coughs> oh, it's a tiny squeak. Laura, my favourite playground ride is a horse or a motorbike. Oh! A, horse. a horse! She says horse. Let's have a look. This is my favourite ride. <laughs> it's a motorbike! Oh, Jeremy. Lee Target were a popular knitwear design company in the 1960s. Pattern 6308 is for woolen ponchos or woolen hats. <laughs> Poncho. <laughs> Jeremy says woolen ponchos. Let's have a look. It's hats. <laughs> Gemma. I auditioned as a dancer for Kick Riol and the Coconuts. Did he think I was a very fine mover or the next big thing? <laughs> so you think next big thing? Yeah. OK. Let's have a look. Next. Next big thing, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Dan, when the Major met Melanie Sykes, the cream of Manchester, was she wearing trousers or a skirt? Trousers. 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 Dan says trousers. Let's have a look. Morning, Major. Morning, Melanie. Trousers, yes. <laughs> In fact, it was the Major who was wearing a skirt. Laura, <laughs> when shed seven by guitar strings, do they ask for six of one or half a dozen of the other? <laughs> half a dozen, half a dozen of the other. Laura says half a dozen of the other. Let's find out if it is right. When you ask for guitar strings, do you ask for six of one or half a dozen of the other? Six of one. Six of one! Oh, an unpopular choice. Jeremy, every morning when I wake up, I have a glass of orange juice or a pot of tea. Pot of tea! <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy says tea. Let's have a look. <laughs> pot of tea! It is a pot of tea there, Jeremy. That's right. Well, that's the end of that round. Let's have a look at the scores. Well, Laura, you have no points at all. Dan, you have 15 points. Jeremy, our reigning Duke of Fluke, 15 points. But in the lead with 30 points, Gemma! Yeah. <laughs> Today's race is between things that give me a headache. We have the pneumatic drill, the nuclear bomb, the ice cream. Of course, ice cream headaches, we all get them. And at the bottom there, the race round. 
<laughs> so I went to the doctors. I said, I've got a ring in my ears. He said, take that telephone off your head. <laughs> I said, I get a terrible headache whenever people offer me barley. He said, migraine. I said, don't you start. <laughs> I said, I've got a heart complaint. He said, murmur. I said, I've got a heart complaint. <laughs> Now, as always, the random mechanical movement generator will speed you down the track, and the last one over the line is out of the race. Gemma, you're in the lead. You have first choice. What do you want to go on? Ice cream. Gemma wants to go on the ice cream. Chocks away. Jeremy, what do you want there? The bomb. Jeremy goes on the bomb. Make sure you don't fall out. Dan, what do you want to go on? Drill. Drill. The drill for Dan. I can... I can dig that. <laughs> Which means Laura must go on the miniature race round. There they all are. So, for the very last time in the series, start the race! Here they go! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the race round, which means I'm afraid we've lost Laura. Round of applause for Laura! <laughs> Laura, you take with you your silver short straw. Thank you can you. have that. Major, how much money is she taking with her? Laura's taking with her nothing at all, Vine. No money at all. But have you enjoyed yourself? Ever so much. Great. There's Laura. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Major, take her away. <laughs> that round's giving me a headache. Well, that leaves three flukers still in the race for the Duke's crown. We're going to take a break now. Before we do, here's a little teaser. Will the rest of the show take place in my mum's kitchen or here in the studio? We'll find out after the break. <laughs> Well, welcome back. Before the break, I gave you a little teaser. Would the rest of the show take place in my mum's kitchen or back in the studio? Mum, what do you think? Back in the studio. Back in the studio. <laughs> oh, there you are. Thanks, Tim. This is Fluke, where a fool can beat a philosopher. This bloke said to me, he said, have you got any pastimes? I said, yes, half past three and quarter past four. <laughs> We've narrowed it down to three flukers, and it's time to sort out which one will be crowned the Duke of Fluke. Then that fluky person can play for the prize. <laughs> Now, at momentous occasions during a short film, you'll hear this noise. From the two choices on the cards in front of you, you've got to decide what that actor will do next. It's 20 points for every right answer. Tonight's film stars Louisa Bradshaw White, Kira from This Life. Now, we've all heard of Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, but not many people know that he had a brother who wasn't as keen on life in the wild and spent most of his time trying to escape the jungle in a bobsleigh. Tiresome, bored of the jungle. <laughs> Cheetah, get your foot inside the bobsleigh. Look out! <laughs> Will they hit a polar bear or a snowman? Polar bear! <laughs> Are you all right? We're going the wrong way. We'll end up... In a forest or on a motorway? In a forest! <laughs> Cheetah, I won't tell you again. Get your foot in. Let me have a look at my map or compass. Map! According to my compass, we're now going the right way. Cheetah wants something to eat. Give him a boiled sweet or banana. Sweet! Are you enjoying that banana, Cheetah? Look out! We're going to hit a dinghy, and there's no way we can avoid it. Will they make a narrow escape or end up in a snowdrift? That was a narrow escape. It's Cheetah's ankle that flicked us safely out of the bobsleigh. <laughs> Looks like a case of Bob's your ankle. <laughs> and the end of round there. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the scores. Dan has 55 points. Gemma has 70 points. But in the lead with 75 points, Jeremy! Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's another bye-bye round. If you want to go on and become the Duke, you've got to avoid the person who hasn't been in the show yet. Jeremy, you get first choice. You're in the lead. One, two or three. <laughs> One, two or three. <laughs> Jeremy's saying, I don't know, but I'm going to point. Two. OK. We've got to avoid the person who hasn't been in the show yet. Oh, he hasn't been in the show yet. In fact, it's not just anybody. 
It's Sean Williamson from EastEnders. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, do you actually ever eat anything in Cascaf? I went in there once, mate, and I had the pudding. Yeah. Do you know what? It jumped off the plate. Oh, <laughs> lemming meringue pie. <laughs> Sean Williamson, there he is. <laughs> so. The Duke went straight for the wrong one. Let's just check between, behind one and two. One and three, rather. Behind number one. Oh, it's the Major. He certainly has. He's been in the show before. And behind number three. Yeah. He was in the show before as well. He certainly was. <laughs> so, sadly, we have lost our Duke. Round of applause for Jeremy, yes. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. It happens, it's the Duke's graveyard, that bit there, you know, and you take with you a silver short straw. There you are. Treasure it, treasure it forever. And we have to take, I'm afraid, this. There we are, the crown. Oh. I know, it's a sad moment. It will go to someone else. You've grown quite attached to that, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, and you're taking some money with you. How much is it? Jeremy is taking with him £75, fine. Round of applause for Jeremy! Thank <laughs> you, take him away! This is where you can really pile on the points because it's our head-to-head -head round. I'll read out two answers, but only one of them is correct. Press your buzzer if you think you've got it. And if you have got it, don't give it to me. It's 25 <laughs> points for each one you get right. Here come the questions. Fluff or barbed wire? Gemma. Fluff. My tummy button is full of fluff. <laughs> spirit or body odour? Gemma. Spirit. Nirvana had a hit with smells like teen spirit. <laughs> right or wrong? Dan. Wrong. The word at the end of this sentence indicates that you got this one wrong. <laughs> orbital or space? Gemma. Orbital. The M25 is the orbital system that encircles London. <laughs> open or sterilise? Gemma. Open. A door handle is used to open a door. <laughs> Danny or Kylie? Gemma. Kylie. A famous Irish song goes, Oh, Kylie boy. <laughs> Cantona or Waddle? Gemma. Waddle. All ducks can do a waddle. This is Vine or Frank Bruno? Gemma. <laughs> Frank Bruno. The name of my mother is Frank Bruno. <laughs> oh, the there. So let's have a look at the scores. Well, Dan has 55 points, but in the lead with 195 points, Gemma. <laughs> but now the end is near, and so you face the final challenge. One of you is about to find out that your goose is cooked. Come with me. <laughs> Yes, on my right are two ovens. Inside one is a cooked goose, inside the other is a goose which is not cooked. If you get the goose which is cooked, your goose is cooked and you're out. <laughs> the other one, you're the Duke of Fluke of the whole series. So, who had the most points? By a long way, I think Gemma. Which one of those two ovens? Audience, what do you think? Blue or red oven? Yeah! Gemma has chosen that one, so, Dan, you go and stand over there. Right, here we go to find out who will be the Duke of Fluke. First of all, Dan... Open your oven. Oh, that looks like to me a cooked goose. Oh. So presumably, we better just check your goose isn't cooked as well, Gemma. Let's have a look. Oh. Well, I'm not quite sure what he's so happy about because uh, that was your brother in there. <laughs> The last hurdle you fell at, you take your silver short straw with you, Dan. Cheers. There you go. And you're taking some money as well. Major, how much? Dan takes with him a slightly disappointing £55. I don't know. It sounds good to me, Major. <laughs> Major, take it away! <laughs> so, Gemma is the final Duke of Fruit! <laughs> Well, Gemma, a very popular winner. Yes, you are the last Duke of Fluke of the series, and you've already won £195. But now you've got the chance to play for the big surprise. But it's not a big surprise anymore, because I can reveal that tonight's prize is your own private executive plane for the day. 
<laughs> yes, you and up to seven of your friends can take off in style to the European destination of your choice. It's VIP treatment all the way. And that's not all because we're also giving you £500 spending money. And that's on top of the money you've already won. What about that? Yes! <laughs> So you can go for a massive slap up meal or a mad shopping spree or whatever you like. So does that appeal to you? Yep. Slightly? <laughs> OK. All you've got to do to win that prize is answer six 50-50 questions. But each time you get an answer wrong, the Major will have to cut through one of the three ropes holding up the gate. If all three ropes are cut, the gate comes crashing down and you've lost the prize. Ah. Oh. Here come the questions now. In my hand is a sponge which usually sits on the side of my bath. Is it a sponge boat or a sponge whale? Whale. She says whale. It's a boat! Oh. Gemma, that's a bad start. Come on, now then. Major, please cut through the first rope. This oblong box usually contains a set of darts, but it's now empty. I have drawn a white arrow on the inside. Which way makes the arrow point upwards? Is it like that or like that? You hold it, Gemma, and you put which, which way? Audience, what do you think? Like that or the other way? Or like that? That way, she says. No, that way to someone else. This is it. Are you sure about this, Gemma? Yeah. We want the arrow to point upwards. Yes! Earlier on today, I had a copy of The Scream by Edvard Munch drawn onto my stomach. Is it saying ooh or ah? Ah! Oh. 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 You think ah, oh. ooh or ah? Ah. Uh. We can give you a chance to change your mind, ooh or ah? Ah! Oh, you change your mind now? <laughs> what are you saying? Ooh. You're saying ooh now? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unveil it very slowly. <laughs> She says, ooh. Well, you can just see his mouth. We want to know what he's saying. Is it going to be ooh? Is it going to be ooh? Ooh! Yes! Here we go. On this dictaphone, you're doing well now. You're on a roll. On this dictaphone, I have recorded my impression of an animal. Is it a llama or a giraffe? Llama. Llama or a giraffe? Or a giraffe? You say a llama. Llama, she says. Have a listen to this, please. Oh, it was a terrible impression, but it was my attempt <laughs> at a giraffe. Major, cut through the second rope. <laughs> right, the situation now is we have two questions, right? You must get them both right, OK? Look at this. This sign used to be on my bedroom door. It says, Tim is in. There is a word obscured on this side. Is it out or in? Out. She says. It's out! Well, I've let you had a few goes at it either way, <laughs> but this we can't change any way we want to look at it. It's a coin. We flick it in the air, heads or tails, for the trip on the executive plane. Heads or tails, audience? <laughs> heads or tails? Tails? Tails. Tails, she says. We want tails. For the executive plane trip, have we got tails? It's heads! Oh, Gemma. Oh, no. Well, we've got to do it, I'm afraid. Major, cut the final rope. Oh. Well, Gemma, you take away 195 pounds. Sorry, I look in such a state. I look like a gorilla, don't I? <laughs> You take with you £195, which is something. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, well, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and for all of you who watched, thank you very much. See you all again. Be Jamie! When you flip the coin, you can never tell which way it's going to land. That's the chance you take when you throw a dice. So the hole is rolled away, the tree of That's the chance you take swings and roundabouts, ups and downs. Life can be a cold game, don't you know? Snakes and lions.